So it's pretty sad that we test on how much a child has mastered a subject the same way we did in the 1990s, before there was an iPhone, before you shopped online. I mean, look at the advancements in technology all across the private sector and how they're being used. But SOL tests really haven't changed. You know, why do we think that the SOL test, a point in time test, is a good test that measures a mastery of a subject? We know that if a child does not eat breakfast before their SOL test in the morning, they're making a low score. We know that if they stay up late at night taking care of their sibling because that single mom is working the night shift, that they're going to score lower. You know, it, I think it was very succinctly put by someone from the Board of Education this year on committee when they said an SOL test is only good for one thing. It tells us who the race and the socioeconomic position of that child is. But that's not what we need. We have computer adaptive testing now, testing that measures the mastery of a subject by a child over a period of time. And not only does it do that, but it allows the, the teacher to understand where the shortfalls are for that particular child and work independently with that child to help them on that particular need and then their other students as well. We have plenty of private schools right now. So there is a choice for parents to send their children there. I would not advise it because there is less accountability and not oversight. I love when someone talks about private schools are not accountable and I realize that they're the only ones that still had in-person learning during this whole thing, so I don't think we want to go there. We need all the above. We need our charter schools. We need our diving schools. We need our governor's academy. I mean, I think we all can agree that no children are all equal across the Commonwealth, that every locality, every school system is not equal. We already agree that a child from a wealthy family in Northern Virginia does not have the same challenges as a child from a single mother in Harrisonburg, then we have to say that it should not be a one-size-fits-all. Uh, a, a one it shouldn't be a round pace for a whole approach. So that's why we need charter schools and everything. Charter schools are tremendous at helping the underserved areas bring in the wraparound services and the additional resources that work to allow those children to help rise them up. That's what they need. But at the same time, we need governor schools and magnet schools to make sure that the best and the brightest are continually challenged. The next founder of Microsoft, the next founder of Apple should be a Virginia. But that only is going to happen if we have schools that continue to challenge those children to continue to excel and progress so that one day they will design that next generation of services that all of our lives depend upon. You see, it's a, it's a, everything is an all the above approach. The model that my opponent thinks is, is best is take all the kids and shove them in the same school. And everyone's going to be equal and everyone's got the same chance, but that's not the case because everyone has different challenges. They all come from different backgrounds. So the answer is to allow different solutions so a parent can choose what best fits the need of their child. Because ultimately, it comes down to one thing. It comes down to making sure every child has a chance to reach their full potential. When you have school choice, you know where accountability comes from? It comes from the parents. Show me one parent that doesn't want the best for their child. Show me one parent that has choice of going to school A or school B down the road and doesn't pick the one that is the best performing. See, accountability means that when I have choice, I, I choose someone else, I'm holding them accountable. We have a problem in our country, in Virginia. We have a tuition crisis that's very reminiscent of the housing crisis in 2005. We have a situation where we are having people take out loans in excess of the value of the product that they're getting. And just like the housing crisis had a bubble that burst, we're going to have a tuition issue and a bubble that's going to burst.